Peace, family. It's your girl, Morgan Renee Myers. Tune in for another reading of Down There, Sexual and Reproductive Health. I'm going to get right into it, and I'm going to try not to be um, as commentative today. This is a pretty extensive chapter. So um, we are on part one for everyone. Um, we read The Pelvic Floor, and today we're reading The Bladder. It starts off with this beautiful poetry. I am the holding tank. I am the lowest point. All flows come down to me. It all comes down to me. The blood flows round and round and the liver decides what stays and what goes. What goes flows to the kidneys. And when the kidneys are done with what goes round, it flows down to me. It all comes flowing down to me, you see. It flows round and it comes down and I hold it in until it is time. Then I let it go. So it can go round somewhere else, back into the flow. I am part of it all, but I am a part. I am touched by it all, but not taken. I am the container, not the contents. I offer short-term storage. No interest, no credit, just in and out, here and gone. I have no plans, no memories, no desires. Fill me, empty me again and again. I am in the flow. I can hold it for you, but I can only hold so much. Your rage trickles down to me. It burns me. It irritates me. Your fear of life seeps into me. It annoys me. It compresses me. Grudges precipitate and settle into me. Your suspicious nature grabs hold of me. It tears at me. It agitates me. Controlling me doesn't give you control over your life. Trust the process, surrender to the flow. It all comes down to me. It all flows round and round and it comes out down here. I am your bladder. Healthy bladder. The urinary bladder is an elastic, muscular, thin tissue storage vessel for urine. Urine is produced by the kidneys and travels to the bladder via thin foot long tubes called uterus. The tube from the bladder to the outside is the urethra, and adult bladders can hold at least 1,000 milliliters before bursting. The bladder has an inner layer of protective, collagen-rich mucus, a middle layer of smooth muscle, the detrusor, thrust-out muscle, and an outer layer of connective tissue which unties the bladder, urethra, ureters, and urethra. At the base of the bladder, smooth muscles form an internal sphincter that involuntarily releases urine. Below that, skeletal muscles, which are under conscious control, form the external urethral sphincter, giving us the choice of when to void. The average human bladder is emptied about two to five hours during the day. When the bladder is about half full, stretch receptors send an impulse to the sacrospinal nerves. These send a message to the brain, causing the detrusted muscle to contract, the internal sphincter to relax, and alerting us to our need to go. If we don't void, the urge disappears within a minute, then recurs at intervals. The tighter the stretch, the more frequent the messages to let go. Women's bladders are constrained in size by the uterus, which lies behind it. Nonetheless, there is a little difference in the capacity of functioning of healthy men's and women's bladder. Showcase this little picture. I don't know if you can really see. Bladder distresses. Bladder distresses range from retention, can't go, to incontinence, can't not go, from mild to chronic infections and UTIs, and even to cancer. If the muscles of the pelvic floor are weak, urine leaks leading to stress incontinence or urge incontinence. If the muscles are very lax, the bladder prolapses, making it difficult to empty it fully. The bladder's proximity to hormone-rich glands, the ovaries and uterus in women, the prostate in men, gives a subtle hormonal twist to bladder problems, especially as we age. Many women are incontinent, while men have the opposite problem, prostate swelling that causes retention. Since her shorter urethra, 4 centimeter versus his 20 centimeters, exposes her bladder to more bacteria, women are 50 times more likely to have urinary tract infections than men. When treated promptly with herbs or drugs these clear quickly if left untreated or if the valves that keep urine from backing up into the kidneys fail to close uterine reflux bacteria can move into the kidneys causing fever chills nausea vomiting back pain on one side and even eventually kidney damage or kidney death 
Men's bladder distresses include prostate enlargement that squeezes the urethra, causing lower urinary tract problems. Some men have a shy bladder. Both sexes deal with the need to urinate frequently while they ought to be sleeping, also known as nocturia. Interstitial cytitis. Interstitial. Let me, let's look this up. <laughs> See if we can get a, a good pronunciation on it. I N T E R S T I T I A L. Okay, let's see what this word is. Came right up. Can you pronounce it? How to pronounce. Interstitial cystitis. Interstitial cystitis. Interstitial cystitis. Interstitial cystitis. Interstitial cystitis is an ulcerated condition of the bladder. It mimics cystitis at first, but IC gets worse, not better, and doesn't respond to treatment. IC may be related to fibromyalgia, another problem that can cause bladder pain in uh, urethritis or inflammation and infection of the urethra. Bacteria such as gonorrhea, chlamydia, um, oh, and two other names I know is uroplasma, urotiscum, and mycoplasma genitalium cause this painful condition. Good Lord. Antibiotics, drugs, or herbs are the treatments of choice. Okay, we're getting into some bladder issues. Urinary retention. Frightened rabbits won't give birth. Frightened people hold things in their pelvises too. Things that hurt, that are traumatic. Grandmother growth speaks with force, but her voice is kind. Your task, my spirit child, is to find a physical or mental space where you feel safe enough to let it all go, where you can let loose. Letting loose is on the right track. Shall we catch the train? Step zero, do nothing. Oops, that's the problem. Seriously though, relaxing deeply can't open the valves. If it doesn't, there may be an obstruction. Step one, collect information. Urinary retention is caused by a swollen prostate gland, a phobia, trauma, surgery, or an obstruction. Obstruction is an emergency. Catheter, catheterization can be life-saving. On the way to the hospital, take parsley root tincture. Step two, engage the energy. Homeopathic stigmata zay maze is specific for relieving retained slash suppressed urine. To trigger release, put a warm, wet washcloth on the urethra. Put your hand under warm, warm running water. Listen to water. Step three, nourish and tonify. Dandelion, chickweed, and nettle are three good friends who work together to increase urinary output and voiding ease. A dose is 10 to 20 drops of each tincture repeated every 10 minutes. The roots of goldenrod alone or with nettle roots make a brew famous for relieving urinary retention. Step four, stimulate slash sedate. Traditional Chinese medicine views retention or difficulty in voiding as a kidney yang deficiency and dysfunction of the triple burner. The TCM formula on page 369 is complicated but effective. Herbalists traditionally use dropperful doses taken every 20 to 120 minutes of tinctures to relieve urinary retention. Best bets, parsley root, bachu leaves, juniper berries, saw palmetto berries, or uva ursi leaves. Can't go? Run hot water over your hands or get into a hot bath or shower and squat down. Put your hand above your pu pubic bone, lightly push in and down, expelling the urine, or get on your hands and knees and let gravity help. Five, use drugs. Diuretics do work short term. Step six, break and enter. At least half the time, urinary retention is caused by use of nasal decongestant or an antihistamine. Stop taking the drug and spontaneous urination returns. A catheter, a plastic tube, is passed through the urethra into the bladder to empty it when you can't. An indwelling catheter, often used after pelvic surgery, can easily cause a bladder infection. Protect yourself with cranberries. 
Help, urinary retention, expect results in two hours. Take a dropper full of dandelion or parsley root tincture every 20 minutes. Sit in a hot bath and relax. All right, urinary incontinence. Stir the heat in your pelvis or it will leak out, dear one. Grandmother growth admonishes. Clench your pelvic floor muscles, then release. Clench, clench, clench. Reclaim your power. Speak your anger instead of pissing it away. Stand tall and clench those pelvic floor muscles. Clench, clench, clench. Clench without stress. Clench without tension, my precious one. Grandmother growth soothes. Let your pelvis be at peace. Clench and say no out loud so your bladder doesn't have to scream it. Clench, clench, clench. Step zero, do nothing. To determine which type of incontinence a patient has, a doctor must perform lengthy and exhaustive tests. You could avoid the expensive tests needed for a diagnosis of incontinence. You know if you leak and when. If not, keep a diary. For safety's sake, rule out infection or bleeding with a simple non-invasive urine test. Then answer the questions below and try the wise woman remedies gathered here. Specialists concur that at least 80% of those with incontinence can regain near normal bladder control with lifestyle changes. What kind of urinary incontinence? During the last three months, if you leak urine, was it when coughing, sneezing, lifting, or exercising when you needed to go? Both. Mixed continents. Keep reading. So step one, collect information. There's no distinct structure around the female urethra. Age weakens all the pelvic tissue. So as you get older, the gasket doesn't work as well. It's a design flaw. Incontinence affects 10 to 35% of women globally, including 30 million American women who spend over $17 billion a year on incontinence pads and treatments. Urinary incontinence means leakage of urine, often because of muscle weakness, but also because of muscle spasms. Stress incontinence affects half of those who leak. Weak pelvic floor muscles can't prevent leakage when there is pressure from coughing, sneezing, laughing, exercising, or bending. Hereditary, childbearing, age, and surgery can weaken muscles. Herbs and pelvic floor exercises can strengthen them. Urge incontinence or overactive bladder causes avoiding urge so intense it is impossible to prevent leaks. It may be caused by muscle or nerve spasms, inflammation, chronic low-level bladder infections, an enlarged prostate, a fibroid tumor, uncontrolled diabetes, a stroke, even circulatory or neurological problems. Herbs and exercises can relax spasms, counter inflammation, eliminate infection, and ease prostate swelling. Overflow incontinence is rare. Urine leaks continually and constantly. Uncontrolled diabetes, MS, a very enlarged prostate, and prostate surgery can cause it. Functional incontinence occurs in those who are physically unable to get to the toilet in time or who fail to get or recognize voiding signals due to Alzheimer's, dementia, MS, or paralysis. It may also result from pelvic surgery or injury to pelvic nerves. Exercises and nerve-nourishing herbs such as oat straw, passion flower, and skull cap can complement drugs. Health, urinary incontinence, expect results in two to four weeks. Do Kegels or low intensity behavioral training. Avoid soda, diet soda, coffee, alcohol, fruit slash citrus juice, and high fructose corn sweet sweetener. Drink two cups of nettle, oat straw, or linden infusion and one and half a cup of cranberry juice daily. Stop taking home hormones, ERT, HRT, the pill, bioidenticals, ally with dandelion root. Transient incontinence is usually triggered by a drug or infection and is relieved when the irritant is removed. Is incontinence linked to age? In men, probably. In women, probably not. Incontinence is experienced by 57% of postmenopausal women and 47% of those under 50. Does childbearing cause incontinence? No. A study comparing more than a thousand pairs of postmenopausal sisters, one who had given birth vaginally and one who had never given birth, found little difference in the incidence, type, or severity of incontinence. If there was prolapse, the stage and type was similar. 
weight makes no significant difference to the likelihood of incontinence but if you are incontinent the more you weigh the worse it will be women who lost as little as three pounds had 28 percent fewer leaks those who lost more cut their leaks by half being diabetic increases incontinence risk by 70 percent if your mother or older sisters were slash are incontinent you are twice as likely to share their fate genes predispose us to incontinence and prolapses Caucasian women have more of those genes than African-American or Asian women. The Women's Health Initiative found over 66% of 1,061 women aged 50 to 79 leaked in a given year. The strongest risk factors were hysterectomy before the age of 40, first birth at age less than 20 in breastfeeding regardless of duration. More money is spent on menstrual pads for incontinence than for menstruation. Ooh. Step two, engage the energy. Low intensity behavioral training works as well as surgery without side effects or complications and relieving all types of incontinence. Six weekly 20 minute sessions help reduce accidents by at least 50%. A third of the participants became completely dry after keeping a diary of voids and leaks, learning Kegel exercising and training themselves to wait longer and longer between voiding. If your incontinence leaves you feeling ashamed, embarrassed, and reluctant to socialize, remember you are not alone. A dose of 10 to 20 drops of calming motherwort tincture may t make it easier for you to seek assistance and consider your options. Time urination. Voiding regularly on a schedule helps elderly, frail, or forgetful people get to the toilet before it's too late. But by slowly expanding interval length, time urination also helps you you train your bladder to hold more urine and void less often. Functional magnetic stimulation of the pelvic floor muscles is a safe, effective treatment against stress and urge incontinence. After, 22, after two 20-minute treatments a week for eight weeks, 58% of women had less leakage. Some were completely dry. Homeopathic remedies for bladder problems cover 14 pages in the homeopathic clinical uh, repertory. I have listed some here and others in the sections on stress and urge incontinence. Bear with me on these words now. Achillea mellifolum, chronic incontinence, cantharis, violent burning pain on voiding, junipers, commute, Communists, bladder heavy, urine scant, especially in elders avoid if pregnant. Nux vomica, pain in the bladder, great urgency. Rust aromatica or agrimony, constant dribbling. Thuja or clavsips per, weak bladder, great urgency. The detruster, the, the detruser muscle is comparable to the bulbous end of the baster, reflexively contracting when nerves fire in the muscle. In order for the urinary system to function in a controlled way, the muscles must be strong, the nerves must be in good order, and the bladder itself must be in good physical condition. Now, hold on. I cannot bypass. Um, I, don't under, I don't know what a bulbous is. Bulbous. It just says fat, round, or bulging bulb of a plant. Okay, so the detruser muscle is comparable to the bulbous end of the baster. Okay, got you. So the baster, like that, you cook with. So the detruser muscle is comparable to the bulbous end of the baster, reflexively contracting when nerves fire in the muscle. See, I just, if having that definition just helped make it understand it a little more. Okay. The bulbous end of the baster. So let's detruser. The detruser muscle. Also, the detruser urinary muscle. 
of the urinary bladder is smooth muscle found in the wall of the bladder. It remains relaxed to allow the bladder to store urine and contracts during urination to release urine. So the detrusor muscle is comparable to the bulbous end of the baster, reflexively contracting when nerves fire in the muscle. In order for the urinary system to function in a controlled way, the muscles must be strong, the nerves must be in good order, and the bladder itself must be in good physical condition. Okay, now I'm, I'm understand. Okay. Step three, nourish and tonify. Nourish the bladder by eating more apricots, black cherries, blueberries, brown rice, beans, celery, corn, cranberries, lentils, miso, parsley, and prunes, dried plums. Seaweeds nourish and heal the muscles, nerves, and mucosa of the kidneys, uterus, uterus bladder, and urethra. Eating kelp such as wakame, kombu, alaria, and neurocystis bullwhip cooked in soups, beans, and whole grains is more effective than taking pills. Nourish and strengthen bladder muscles with one to two quarts of comfrey leaf or nettle leaf infusion weekly. Add a pinch of celiac, wait a minute, silica rich horsetail for even more effect. Soothe bladder mucosa with teas of corn silk, plantain seed, or mulling. Let's see if I'm pronouncing it right. M-U-L-L-E-I-N. Mullen. Mullen. Okay. Oh, this is what a mullen plant is? I don't know if y'all can really see that. All right. So you can soothe the bladder mucosa with teas of corn silk, plantain seed, or mullein, or use a drop of full one to three times a day of tincture of burdock root slash seed, cleavers, herb, or marshmallow root. Dandelion tea or tincture tones and tighten dandelion tea or tincture tones and tightens bladder sphincters. Regular regular use of five to nineteen drops daily of tincture of passion flower, oat straw, or skull cap strengthens the nerves of the bladder. Excuse me. Squat, crawl, and sit cross leg to strengthen pelvic floor muscles and counter incontinence. Women who did at least 40 Kegel clenches a day for three or more months were able to control or cure stress, urge, and mixed incontinence, unlike those receiving sham treatments. Women who were coached got the best results. Dr. Kegel advises five clenches on awakening while still in bed, five more when up, then five every half hour throughout the day. Avoid these common bladder irritants. Food preservatives, artificial sweeteners, Flavors and colors, coffee, alcohol, pepper, curry, black tea, tomatoes, citrus, parsley juice, and soda pop. If incontinence makes you reluctant to be passionately sexual for fear you'll wet the bed, invest in a waterproof pad, please. <laughs> Out on a plastic limb. Plastic in the diet is associated with prostate cancer, PCOS, and perhaps incontinence as well. Therefore, I avoid microwave food, store leftovers in glass, avoid produce, meat, and fish wrapped in plastic, avoid food in styrofoam, avoid bottled water. The bladder, yellow dot root, gently aids bowel movements, freeing the pelvic floor from the pressure of constipation. The tea is too bitter for most, so tincture is preferable. A drop of full a day is the dose. Yoga, Pilates, weightlifting, and Tai Chi build core strength and tone up tiny muscles in the pelvis that help you stay in control. Step four, stimulate slash sedate. Tinctures of Damiana leaf. Licorice root, kava kava root, uva ursi leaf, black haw, and or cramp bark in doses ranging from one to eight dropperfuls a day help counter incontinence. Licorice is a specific against kidney insufficiency and incontinence. Take it with dandelion to prevent electrolyte disturbances. Herbalist Holly Guzman, who specializes in urinary difficulties, relies on elevator pills to help lift and strengthen the pelvic floor. Buy them at Chinese pharmacies 
as Buzz Hong Ki Chi Tong look for golden lock pills too, a traditional formula against bedwetting. Step five, let me uh, read the Chinese pharmacy uh, herb that it was saying to buy. Buzz dash, Buzz B-U-Z dash H-O-N-G-Y-I-Q-I-T-A-N-G. Hong Gi Tang. I have no clue. Step five, use drugs. A wide range of drugs, diuretics, sedatives, antidepressants, and histamines, calcium channel blockers, and alpha blockers can cause or worsen incontinence. A wide range of drugs. Uh, oh, excuse me. Hormone replacement, ERT or HRT, increases the risk that a healthy woman will become incontinent and make the symptoms worse in women who already are. In the Women's Health Initiative study, 27,000 postmenopausal women were given either hormones or placebo. The incidence, frequency, and severity of all types of incontinence increased significantly in women taking ERT or HRT. This was true for all racial and ethnic groups and was not linked to prior incontinence. The longer the use, the greater the risk. In HERS, Hormone and Estrogen Replacement Study, half of the women who took HRT developed incontinence compared to a third of those who took the placebo. After only one year, the risk of weekly episodes of incontinence was three times greater among hormone users. After four years, it was five times higher. Drugs that treat incontinence can cause a rapid decline in your mental acuity. Though, mm, those who take Detrol or Ditropan have a rate of cognitive decline that is one and a half times faster than those who did not take these drugs. If you are taking medications for dementia as well, the mental decline is magnified. Mm. Drugs always have side effects. Research carefully before use. After three to four months, go without to see if you still need the drug. Step six, break and enter. In addition to being risky, surgery can cause insignificant discomfort and isn't always effective in treating urinary incontinence. Mild electrical shocks delivered in a clinic or at home with a prescription device excuse me, can relieve urge and stress incontinence. The current provokes involuntary contraction, which over a period of months of daily treatments has the same effect as Kegels. The muscles and nerves of the bladder are strengthened. FDA approved urgent PCNE unromodulation looks like acupuncture but isn't. A needle is inserted near the ankle to stimulate a bladder controlling nerve that goes up the leg to the pelvis. 12 30 minute sessions reduce leakage by at least half for most participants. Odor free. Chlorophyll taken orally reduces and eliminates urine odors. One of the richest sources of chlorophyll, yes, even more than wheatgrass, is nettle infusion. Chlorophyll pills work too. Chlorophyll is in um green plants, isn't it? So just by eating like your spinach and your greens and your kale and your broccoli, you probably get it that way too. I could be wrong, but... All right, now we're on to stress incontinence. So that was, good Lord, urinary... We just did urinary retention, urinary incontinence. Now we got stress incontinence. Step one, do nothing. I mean, step zero, do nothing. Limiting fluids, especially before exercise, can help. Step one, collect information. Repeated childbearing can weaken pelvic muscles and some birthing situations made it more likely. Women who receive an epidural who can deliver by C-section are twice as likely to have stress incontinence as they age. Women who tuck their chin and hold their breath during the peak of labor contraction, coach pushing, give birth more quickly but increase their risk of stress incontinence. Stress incontinence is common after prostate surgery. Step two, engage the energy, homeopathic remedies for those with stress incontinence. Belladonna, leakage starts after childbirth or surgery. Causticum, unaware of leaks on coughing, walking, sneezing. Ferrum, tickling sensation in bladder slash urethra, better at night. Nux vomica, leaks laughing, coughing, sneezing, great urge. Pulsatilla, leakage worse for sitting, walking. Sepia, bearing down sensation with le leakage also at night. 
Step three, turn, nourish and tonify. Nothing is as effective at countering incontinence as pelvic floor exercises. Dr. Kegel called stress incontinence pelvic fatigue syndrome. Any woe slash man bothered by incontinence, prolapse, or a desire for stronger orgasms will benefit. To nourish the bladder, drink two or more quarts of comfrey relief infusion a week. Adding more fat to the diet helps too. I know avocado is a healthy fat. Not sure what else. Got to look it up. Make the effort to stay active. Exercise. Strengthen the muscles of the back, belly, and thighs, making the pelvic floor stronger and incontinence less likely. Many women give up sports because jumping, tensing their thighs or buttocks, or lifting weight causes leakage. Protect yourself with a liner, a pad, or protective underwear, or fight back with a tampon. Women who wear a tampon while exercising stay significantly dry, drier. It holds the pelvic floor up. I'm really surprised that she's um advocating for tampons. A rubber passeri or a sea sponge tampon does it too and can be used many times. Or try a plug. Really, there are tiny urethral plugs that stop the urethra to prevent leaks. Step four, stimulate slash sedate. There are four primary non-surgical medical remedies currently in use to treat stress and continence. Passeris, electricity, estrogen, and physical therapy. In NIH-sponsored summary of over 96 clinical trials found Passeris and plugs do decrease leakage but don't cure. Electrical stimulation has no effect. Oral estrogen makes incontinence worse. Physical therapies, Kegels, and bladder retraining produce the most consistently beneficial results, helping more than half of the women using them. Step five, use drugs. Actually, don't use drugs. Prescription drugs are not effective in relieving stress incontinence with the possible exception of duloxetine, an antidepressant which blocks reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine in the spinal cord, thus spinal cord, thus stimulating the nerve that contracts the, ure the urethral sphincter. Pseudophidrine activates the autonomic nervous system and causes the urethra to tighten, but only in about 10% of those who take it, and it raises blood pressure. Topical vaginal estrogen cream may relieve your stress incontinence, especially if menopause aggravated it. Everyone who is incontinent has weak pelvic floor muscles. Those with stress incontinence deny the prior problem, pay little attention to bladder signals, and are surprised when a slight physical exertion forces urine out. The urge patient, on the other hand, is preoccupied with bladder signals and rushes to the toilet at the first signals, and the brain learns to stop inhibiting the reflective contractions of the bladder. Step six, break and enter. A new surgical option may revolutionize the treatment of stress incontinence. Under local anesthesia, muscle cells are cut from the biceps. They are grown for six weeks or until there are 60 million of them. Injected into the muscle that controls the flow of urine, they proliferate and rebuild the sphincter, restoring full bladder control in 90% of the women within 24 hours. Ferdinand Frosher, MD of Innsbruck, co-developer of the technique, says the whole procedure takes just 10 to 15 minutes. It reverses the effects of aging. Most women, 80%, retain complete bladder control for a year afterward. Long-term data are not yet available. Getting help when surgery is needed can be challenging because female reproduction and urology are separate medical specialties. Urologists know little more than the basics about female reproductive organs. Few doctors in either specialty know much about treating middle-aged and older women. Surgery to resolve incontinence is neither easy nor always successful. If you do decide to go for it, a, urine, a urogynecologist, someone who specializes in female urinary problems, is preferred. Collagen injections used to bulk up weakened bladder muscles have to be repeated every six months, can cause allergic reactions, excuse me, and generally provide only partial relief. <clears throat> transvaginal radio frequencies applied by means of a thin probe inserted into the vagina during a 20-minute local anesthesia outpatient surgical procedure heat up and break down pelvic floor muscles and the urethra the resulting scar tissue gives firmer shearer control three quarters of women who have the procedure called Renessa 
R-E-N-E-S-S-A, Renessa, were continent or improved at the one-year follow-up. No long-term studies are available. Weight loss, even a little, even as a result of bariatric surgery, reduces the severity of both urinary and fecal incontinence. Think having a C-section instead of a vaginal birth will protect you against later incontinence? It won't. A hysterectomy may help, but only if you are already incontinent. In a study of 12,000 women, 89% of those with severe, excuse me, 1,200 women, 89% of those with severe and 62% of those with moderate incontinence experience improvement after hysterectomy. However, 17% of those with mild or no incontinence experience leakage in the year after surgery. Middle-aged women with hysterectomies had a 60% higher risk of incontinence later in life. For women who aren't satisfied with partial relief, surgery is the treatment most likely to succeed. Surgical corrections for incontinence used to be limited to the birch 49% cure rate or the fascial sling 66% cure rate. These are now obsolete. A minimally invasive procedure, the mid-urethral sling 65 to 90% cure rate, places a narrow strip of plastic mesh under the urethra. It takes 10 to 30 minutes under local anesthesia. About 10% of women have an adverse reaction to the polypropylene mesh, bladder performance, Perfor, perfor, <laughs> bladder perforation occurs in 6% of retropubic slings, TVT, transorbitator slings, TOT, avoid the bladder but cut into the vagina. Child, let me look that up. It's too much for me. Bladder... Perforation. Ooh, child. I didn't want to see the pictures. Okay, never mind. Um, let me look up. I was trying to look up the bladder perforation occurs in six percent of retro retro. Pubic slings, also known as TVT. So a retropubic mid-urethral sling is a procedure to correct stressed urinary incontinence. SUI is a type of urinary incontinence that is defined as involuntary leakage of urine related to an increase in intra-abdominal pressure that occurs during sneezing, laughing, coughing, or exercise. So... Um, bladder preparation occurs in 6% of retropubic slings. And then you got the trans, trans, transorb, trans, definition of the transorb to radar sling is a surgical procedure that uses a narrow strip of permanent mesh to correct stress urinary incontinence. So avoid the bladder, but cut into the vagina. No woman should have to live with stress incontinence as long as a qualified surgeon performs the procedure. The FDA has received over a thousand reports of adverse events following pelvic reconstructive urinary sling surgery with synthetic mesh-based materials. They issued a public health notification. Signs of complications include yellow discharge, chronic vaginal infection, persistent bleeding, painful intercourse, and yikes, protrusions of mesh through the vaginal wall. So six is, I love how she breaks it down. You have from zero, do nothing all the way down to some homeopathic remedies, some drug remedies, some breaking inner, and breaking inner is usually the worst and not the, um, the, not the one you should be going for first. <laughs> Basically from what she's writing. Okay, hold on. This little thing is cutting off my circulation. Urge incontinence. Overactive bladder. My dearest, Grandmother Grove says with a wink, your power is in your belly. When you pee too much, you piss away your strength. When you fear the life force that lives inside you, you can't retain it. You lose it. Gather yourself up. Take yourself in hand. Hold yourself with a firm grip. Bear up. Pull yourself up. Not by your bootstraps, but by your pelvic floor. Sweet child, contain yourself by opening yourself to life. Allow life to pulse and vibrate in every cell. 
You can do it. You can. Step zero, do nothing. Spare yourself the health risk of invasive tests. The majority of cases of urge incontinence are idiopathic. That is, they have no known cause. Try some of these simple, safe, effective remedies. Step one, collect information. About 34 million Americans have urgent and frequent need to urinate more than 10 times in 24 hours. Most are older than 40 and one third to a half are men. The urge in urgent bladder comes on so quickly and so powerfully that there isn't time to get to a toilet, even if you are standing right next to one. For some, even the thought or sight of a toilet causes leakage. Help, overactive bladder, expect results in two weeks. Use a visualization daily. Do your Kegels every day. Keep avoiding diary. Retrain your bladder. Use biofeedback. Drink a quart of more comfrey relief infusion each week. Diagnostic tests rarely reveal a reason for urge incontinence, and they may be harmful. If you don't have an enlarged prostate, a bladder infection, vaginal yeast overgrowth, inter... Ah, I keep forgetting how to say it. Interstitial... Interstitial... Sy- cystitis, fibromyalgia, or multiple sclerosis, then your incontinence is caused by abnormal nerve signals to the bladder that initiate spastic muscle contractions, uncontrolled urges, and urine leaks. A bladder diary lists the times a day you urinate, including leaks, the amount of urine you void, what you drink and eat, and when, and, and when, and la, 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 la. the amount of urine you void, what you drink and eat, and when, and medicines you took. Over a period of a week or two, patterns emerge that can help you retrain your bladder. About 30% of women with overactive bladders get better simply by understanding what's happening and thinking about it. That makes sense. But when we always on the go, 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 and we're not taking time to slow down and tune in and listen to our bodies, then we just automatically want to depend on sources outside of ourselves. Our body knows how to heal itself, so we need to listen to it. Step two, engage the energy. A powerful visualization coupled with a physical trigger can put you in control of your bladder fast. Choose an image, visualize it repeatedly, then use it to help prevent leaks and urgency. Visualizing for even two minutes a day controls incontinence faster than drugs. Use the physical trigger while you visualize and eventually it alone will be enough to control your urge. Sit alone in a tranquil environment. A bathtub is fine. Uh, Close your eyes and imagine vividly. Use all your senses. See the scene, taste it, smell it, feel its texture, listen to it. As in a dream, you can create whatever you want. Allow yourself time to create your visualization and make it real. Don't try to do it all at once. Create your own visualization or try one of these. Visualize the nerve messages flowing between the bladder and brain as a stream. Build dams and locks along the stream to slow it down. Squeeze your fist in a slow rhythm. Visualize the bladder nerve pathway as a road. Imagine the cars and trucks on the road. Then visualize toll booths at intervals, starting at the bladder and working your way up to the brain. Gently bite your lower lip. Visualize a large, strong hand, gently but firmly pushing up between your legs, strengthening your pelvic floor, lessening the voiding urge, and giving you warm comfort. Smile. Homeopathic remedies for those with urge incontinence. Arnica Montana, constant urging, bladder feels full and sore. Cantharis, intolerable urgency, burn, burning leakage. Nitric acid, nitric acid, painless incontinence, urine smelly like a horse. Oh my. Um, <laughs> Phi Act, PH-AC, milky, watery, profuse, urine gushes out. Rust, tox, urine dark, scanty, worse at night or when sitting, sulfur, sudden, intense, uncontrollable urges. Biofeedback using electrical or pressure sensing devices can increase awareness of the bladder, thereby foiling urge incontinence. Biofeedback is so well studied and so effective in relieving incontinence that Medicare covers the cost. Step three, nourish and tonify. Retrain your bladder. Counter the urge by gradually lengthening the time between visits to the toilet. With practice, your nerves will signal less frequently. Food additives such as potassium sorbet, aspartame, and food colorings aggravate urge incontinence, including at least 25 grams of real fiber from whole grains, beans, and nuts in the daily diet may significantly ease overactivity in the bladder and help end urge incontinence. Caffeine makes the bladder contract. 
No wonder women who take in 30 milligrams of caffeine a day, three cups of coffee, are 70% more likely to have an overactive bladder. Step four, stimulate slash sedate. For men with overactive bladders, herbalist Terry Willard uses a tea of equal parts parsley leaf, corn silk, and dandelion leaf to reduce urine acidity and ease bladder irritability. When needed, he adds wild yam root to soothe and valerian to calm. Saw palmetto berries in tincture or tea, relax the smooth muscle in the bladder neck and help reduce overactivity. Herbal nurse Martha Lipster uses Ma Huang to reduce swelling and relax the spastic muscles of overactive bladders. Heat and inflammation underlie an overactive bladder. Herbalists in India counter this with cooling, soothing infusions of marshmallow root, plantain leaf, or mullein leaf. Linden or comfrey infusions do the same. If your problem is severe, add one to four tablespoons of powdered turmeric to your daily court infusion. If you can't get the knack of doing pelvic floor clenches, don't despair. Engage a pelvic floor physical therapist to act as a personal trainer for you and your bladder. Acupuncture relieves urge incontinence for 75% of patients, says researchers in London. The Oregon Department of Health agrees. As few as four weekly treatments increase bladder capacity, reduce urgency and frequency, and improve the quality of life just as well as drugs or behavioral therapies. Do it yourself. Press hard for two to three minutes on each indicated spot, left, illustrated left, which will be tender on both ankles daily for three months. These different spots you press on them apparently that's supposed to help with incontinence or urgency incontinence step five use supplements an herbal extract containing hops and uva ursi with alpha tocopherol acetate vitamin e ease bladder irritability and pain and lessen urinary incontinence in 772 of 915 patients Magnesium deficiency triggers triggers muscle spasms and urge incontinence. Supplements of 200 to 600 milligrams daily may help or up your magnesium level with infusion of oat straw or nettle. Vegans and vegetarians with overactive bladders probably lack vitamin vitamin B, a critical nutrient found only in animal foods. Vitamin B deficiency causes uncontrollable bladder spasms. The cure is a healthier diet. Eat eggs, fish, organic dairy, and meat. Uh, vitamin B cannot be absorbed from oral, oral supplements. Want to test? Have your methylmalonic acid level checked. It's a better indicator of deficiency than test for vitamin B itself. Step five, use drugs, water pills, and tranquilizers aggravate an overactive bladder. Herbal diuretics like corn silk, burdock root, and dandelion don't. Neither do herbal tranquilizers like St. Jones wort, passion flower, or motherwort tincture. One to four dropperfuls daily. Okay. For a current list of drugs that cause incontinence and bladder woes, check www.wortpills.org. Goodness. Anti-muscarinic, anti anti-colinergic, and antipasmodic drugs such as ditropan, detrol, and sanctura relax the bladder's detrusor muscle and extend the time between urge and voiding. Drugs are better than nothing, but their effect is minimal, a reduction of urination a day compared to a placebo. The side effects may be nearly as troublesome as the incontinence itself and dangerous increased blood pressure and heart rate. Era. Era. The meas inhibit, inhibited secretion of stomach acid, saliva, and sweat, dry mouth, constipation, worsening of glaucoma, confusion, impaired attention, and memory problems. Although topical vaginal estrogen cream can calm an overactive bladder, low estrogen doesn't cause incontinence. In fact, postmenopausal women who take oral estrogen have more incontinence and worse urinary problems than those who don't. Tofranil, 
an antidepressant in conjunction with an anti-musarnic. I got to look that up. What is that? And how do I say it? anti musk Summary, Mus muscarinic antagonists are a group of anticholinergic -colin drugs that competitively inhibit post-gagalonic... What? Break it down in simple terms. There's no simple term for this. As such, they have a variety of applications that involve the parasympathetic nervous system. This is why I, mm -mm, I cannot. I don't know. Child. All right. So, Jelnik is an antipasmodic drug applied topically to calm and overactive bladder. After 12 weeks of use, 27% of women had complete relief of symptoms. Step six, break and enter. Two last resorts, both invasive Experimental and costly Botox delivered to the bladder lining via catheter blocks nerve impulses and trigger overactive bladder. Surgical implant implantation of a sacral neuromodulator relaxes sp spasming bladder muscles. Her story. Randy is a well-educated African-American woman who has had Parkinson's for more than 20 years. Over the past five years, my bladder has become more and more overactive. The primary medicine I use to deal with my Parkinson's is the Ayurvedic remedy, Mucana Purines. It has been taken in water and that aggravated the situation. Eventually, I started taking Oxybutin, but it became a less effective over time and it made my bowel so sluggish that I fell into the habit of using colonic irrigation, high enema, every month. Then I read Susan's article on Comfrey. I got the summary of the Comfrey research from the Henry Doubleday Research Institute here in the UK. They refuted the claims that Comfrey could not be ingested. I started to take Comfrey tea. The results were fast and dramatic. No more urinary urgency. Then I noticed my constipation, or rather, I didn't notice it. It was gone too. By sheer coincidence, earlier this year, I bought a symptom up the... Uplandica, Uplandica to plant in my herbaceous garden. It is so easy to grow. I dry it and make my tea. For the first time in a long time, I feel like I have some control over my health. Parkinson's isn't easy to live with, but my bladder and bowel problems show were the straw that broke this camel's back. Thanks to Comfrey, neither of them bother me now. Wow. All right, Nocturia. When we live wild, fire kept us safe muses grandmother growth when we live wild night creatures were kept away by the steady glow of fire when we live wild we kept alert all night long listening for predators keeping the fire going you are no longer wild my beloved you don't need to fight, feed the fire, but your body remembers and wakes you up at night honor your part in protecting the young when this happens Smile and remind your bladder that you are not alone, not solely responsible for the fire. Yes, you are allowed to rest, my dear, to take a break from eternal vigilance. Spiral down into deep dreams. Rest, trust, rest. Step one, collect information. Nocturia, waking to urinate more than twice a night is common during menopause and as we age. The real risk is that you'll fall all the way to the bathroom in the dark. Women with nocturia are 26% more likely to fall and 34% more likely to break a bone. Protect yourself. Keep a chamber pot by your bed. Remove scatter rugs. Keep a flashlight handy. Night light. Night lights deserve deep sleep. As we age, a natural shift in the timing of urination occurs. Instead of being most active during the day, the urinating system gets into gears at night, alas. Hypertension, diabetes, stroke, kidney disease, and, and bladder tumors also cause nocturia, as does prostate enlargement. Help, nocturia. Expect results in two weeks. Are your medications? to blame if so change them drink nettle infusion or cranberry juice daily drink less in the evening and more during the day 
Step two, engage the energy. Homeopathic remedies for those with nocturia include apis, argentum, nitrosum, arnica, montana, arsenicum, belladonna, benzo, benzocum, acidum, costiscum, equis, hymele, ferrum, metallicum, graphite, callium, nitricum, crestatum, lacanimum, magnesium phos, natrum, muraticum, nitricum, pulsatilia, rustoc, sepia, silicia, terra, and sulfur. We have to look all of that up. Have no clue what they are, what they do. Step three, nourish and tonify. My favorite herbal remedy for menopausal women with nocturia is nettle infusion. It rebuilds health, adrenal function, deepens sleep, and resets the bladder clot. The initial response to drinking nettle infusion is more frequent urination, but this rarely continues for more than a few days, after which frequency and urge normalize. Quercetin is a strong antioxidant. It is the preferred helper for men with nocturia because it increases urinary and pelvic inflammation and inhibits cell damage in the kidneys too. Find quercetin in oak bark, oak bark nettles, cranberries, and blueberries. Step four, stimulate and sedate. Limiting fluid intake to a little water only in the four hours before bed helps. Volunteers who reduce fluid intake by 25% had 34% less urgency and 23% reduction in daytime frequency and a 7% decrease in nocturia. Step five, use drugs. Diuretic blood pressure medications can worsen nocturia. Instead, try one or two dropperfuls of Hawthorne tincture twice a day. De Desmopressin acetate or DDAVP, a prescription hormonal nasal spray, blocks the urge to urinate. Elders who use it before bed can shift the timing of their urination toward daytime. It is harsh on the heart and kidneys, though, and can imbalance electrolytes. Except for dox doxazosin, no drugs make a significant difference for men whose enlarged prostates wake them repeatedly. Now we're moving on to... Parousis slash shy bladder. Step zero, do nothing. That's what most of those with a shy bladder do. Nothing. They can't urinate. They don't talk about it. They don't seek treatment. And in the worst case scenarios, they don't leave home. Step one, collect information. About 20 million Americans and 2 million Canadians, most of the men deal with shy bladder. For 10% of them, par parousis is incapacitating. Shy bladder is a phobia. There's no physical cause for it. The thought of some, the thought that someone else may be watching, listening, or aware of one's urination produces excruciating embarrassment and extreme anxiety in those with bashful bladder. This anxiety causes the smooth muscles of the urethra to clamp down, making it impossible to void no matter how strong the desire or effort. In mild cases, holding in public is impossible. In the worst cases, urination is so blocked that catheterization is needed to release it. Holding urine in the bladder for long periods can weaken the elasticity of the bladder and increase the risk of infection. Step two, engage the energy. Psychoactive substances such as peyote, mescaline, um, Physilocybin and LSD-25 are the shaman's choice for helping those with phobias. Consider this true story. As the effects of the plant began to come on, reality shifted and I felt terror. I was sure that everyone was not only watching me, but reading my mind as well. My guide laughed. They are only concerned with themselves. Set aside your big ego and your wish to be the center of attention. You are just another human, invisible to others. Laugh at your fear. Send it away. And I did don't have access to psychoactive plants, visualize or try graduated exposure therapy, the only accepted orthodox treatment for those with peru um, peruresis. Emotional freedom technique is a free of charge, self-guided, long-established, easy, powerful cure for all phobias. It includes humming, tapping, and repeating a mantra of self-love. Social phobias do run in families, often the first step in healing peru per Paruresis is to share with others. Let me see if I'm pronouncing that right. P-A-R-U-R-E-S-I-S. -S. How do you pronounce? Do not 
Let them take away your power. I'm just trying to Not hear it pronounced. Take away your democracy. YouTube, love an ad. Right now for how you are going to get involved. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. Public. Get to the word, honey. I'd be so aggravated. I need to have my dictionary handy. That's that's my fault. Pariuresis. Pariuresis. I knew I was saying it wrong. Pariuresis. So, the first step in healing pariuresis is to share with others. What was I saying? Pariuresis. <laughs> pariuresis. Okay, so, um, social phobias do run in the family. Often, the first step in healing pariuresis is to share with others. Those with pariuresis may also have panic attacks, claustrophobia, obsessive compulsive problems, and a deep fear of germs. The tremendous levels of frustration and despair experienced by pariuretics is not relieved by psychoanalysis. Step three, nourish and tonify. Corn silk tea or the liquid from canned corn soothes and heals overstretched bladder issues. Be kind to your nerves with oat straw infusion. Regular use of two to four cups a day will rebuild your nervous system so you can handle more stress with less anxiety. Step four, stimulate and sedate. Keep a bottle of anxiety relieving motherwork tincture in your pocket. A dose of one or two dropper fulls taken on the way to the toilet relaxes mind and muscles. A dropper full under the tongue stops rapid heartbeat, eases heavy breathing, and counters panic. Step five, use drugs. More than half the men answering a recent survey said they were unable to produce a urine sample on demand for a drug test, especially if they were under surveillance. Well, all right, let's his lower urinary tract symptoms. Step one, collect information. Lutz, lower urinary tract symptoms, can be caused by benign enlargement of the prostate, prostatitis, or cancer. The most common lower urinary tract symptoms are frequent urination at night, nocturia, a weak and constant start and stop flow of urine, difficulty irritating urination, initiating urination, delays of up to a minute, intense urgency, often with a little result, straining to urinate, uh, dripping and leaking after urination, being unable to empty the bladder completely. Step two, engage the energy. Homeopathic remedies for men with lower urinary tract symptoms. Um, clematis, dribbling, short stops, last bit burns severely. Ignatia, frequent urgency but unable to pass urine. Crystal, involuntary, hurried urination as if a lump is pressing down on the bladder. Sepia, feeble, slow, thick urine, cutting pain beforehand. Seranoa, cerulita, dribbling. Sulfur, ineffectual, painful efforts to urinate. Step three, nourish and turnify. For freedom from LUTs, eat pumpkin seeds daily. Lower urinary tract symptoms. Trinovin, a standardized extract of red clover, reduces LUTs. Drinking one or two quarts excuse me, of red clover infusion a week will too and at a fraction of the cost. Four, simulate and sedate. Horsetail herb tea eases the prostate, soothes the urinary tract, improves sphincter function, and tones bladder muscle. Doses one to two cups daily. Saw palmetto is the herb of choice for men with LUTs. Regular use of the tincture, not capsules, improves the strength of urine flow, decreasing dribbling, eliminates residual urine, and counters nocturia. A dose of two to four dropper fulls twice a day works quickly. If LUTs is particularly severe, German herbalist Rudolf Fritz Weiss suggested one or two tablespoons of ground pumpkin seeds twice a day, plus a dropper full of tinctures of saw palmetto and echinacea. Pygium uh, and nettle root seem particularly helpful for men dealing with LUTs. In a placebo-controlled study, men taking these herbs for one month reported significant increases in urine flow, substantial reduction in residential urine, and fewer trips to the bathroom at night. A 20-minute soak in hot water eases pain faster. To help force urine out, press a finger behind the scrotum and pull up to the base of the penis. It's not just a convenience problem. It wrecks your entire life. Step five, um, use supplements. Dr. Carlton Frederick says copper zinc superoxide dismutase injected by a veterinarian is remarkably helpful. He also suggests 1,000 milligram vitamin C twice a day. 
but men who take even 250 milligrams a day are 83% more likely to have LUTs than those who don't. Um, help, LUTs, expect results in two to four weeks. Relax in a hot bath, take a dropper full each of saw palmetto and St. John's wort. Tinctures twice a day, limit use of antihistamines, decongestants, diuretics, alcohol, coffee, tea, soda, acidic foods. Step 5B, use drugs. When the prostate is enlarged, it doesn't just swell, it creates new muscle tissue. Alpha blockers help muscles relax, relieving urinary symptoms within a week for three quarters of those with prostate swelling. Side effects include sudden drop in blood pressure on standing, fatigue, and retrograde ejaculation. Semen goes into the bladder instead of out. Generics have more noticeable side effects than Flomax or Euro. Zaxtral. If in um, instead use dropperfuls of Saint Saint Jones wart tincture to relax muscles. Men who also take Proscar are sixty seven percent less likely to need surgery than men who take no drugs. Step six: Break and enter. If you cannot urinate, sit in hot water. Take a dropperful of parsley root tincture. If you still can't go, get to the nearest emergency room for catheterization. Refuse further surgery. To relieve LUT syndrome symptoms, the urinary channel can be widened surgically with laser heat, uh, radio frequency waves, or needless tuna, T-U-N-A. And transurethral resection of the prostate, um, T-U-R-P. A small laser is threaded through the urethra and used to destroy the offending tissues. General anesthesia is required in three to five days in the hospital. The success rate is quite high, about 95% with fewer than 10% needing a second procedure. Incontinence and erectile difficulties are rare. The major drawback is infertility. Orgasm is pleasurable, but scarring sends semen retrograde into the bladder instead of out. A study of 400,000 men who chose the TURP or the transurethral resection of the prostate um, found that within five years, they were more likely to require additional prostate surgery than men who had refused surgery, and they were more likely to die than those who chose the more severe prostatectomy surgery. Uh, transurethral needle ablation, tuna, is done in a doctor's office with a local anesthetic. A small scope is passed through the urethra and into the prostate where radio waves or microwaves destroy the troublesome tissues. Tuna is especially effective at improving urine flow rates with a success rate of 70%. Bladder star, comfrey. A herb that can improve muscle tone in the bladder, ease irritation in the bladder lining and uterus, heal all surfaces, counter inflammation, and create resilient health throughout the urinary system is a true bladder star. That's comfrey. The Allen the Allentoin in comfrey is a superb healer of mucous surfaces such as those lining the bladder and uterus. Comfrey gives almost immediate relief to those with in inter Tissual cytitis and works to counter urge incontinence in overactive bladders. Comfrey's anti inflammatory action relieves urethritis and prostate swelling too. The astringent tannins in comfrey help tone and tighten the bladder and pelvic floor muscles, countering stress incontinence. Comfrey also relaxes the detrusor muscle. The lavish amount of minerals, vitamins, and protein found in comfrey allow the body to engage in any repairs that are needed and may counter bladder cancer. A sitz bath of the leaves or roots <clears throat> work well for anyone reluctant to consume comfrey, but for best results, comfrey leaf infusion a cup or two a day gets my vote. I feel safe drinking comfrey leaf infusion made from commercial bulk comfrey and have been doing so at the rate of at least two quarts a week. For more than 25 years. For decades, Lois Johnson, MD, had done blood work on all her clients taking comfrey and has never seen any elevation of liver enzymes. I am convinced that the majority of the comfrey leaf for sale in the United States is Uplandica, despite labels claiming it is officinalis. Common garden comfrey is Symphytum Uplandica and Russian comfrey or blue comfrey, a tall plant with blue purple flowers. Cyphetum officinalis, a small plant with yellow flowers, is rarely grown or used. Still hesitant? 
Christopher Hobbs, third generation herbalist, says broadleaf plantain is a great substitute for comfrey leaf. All right, urinary tract infections and cystitis. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fire in your belly is good, my child. Grandfather growth assures you. It fuels your creative potential, gets you going, and heats up your desire to manifest. But fire in your bladder is not. When heat goes in but doesn't come out, it can scorch you. You are overheating, my dear. You are all stemmed up, steamed up and under far too much pressure. You have taken in more than you can process. Concentrated what needs to be diffused, held on to what needs to be empty. Look inside and ask yourself, what is raging? What are you pissed off about? What makes you burn with shame, shake with fear? What needs to be eliminated from your life? Take a deep breath. Take gentle care of you. I love you. Step zero, do nothing. Nothing is one of the classic symptoms of bladder infection. You feel like you really, really, really have to go right now, even though you just went or you tried to, but nothing happens. The fewer sexual partners one has, the less likely one is to get cystitis. Step one, collect information. Urinary tract infections, UTIs or cystitis are the most common form of bacterial infection. One third of all women will have one by the age of 24. Virtually every woman will have at least one acute UTI during a lifetime. Many have chronic cystitis. Men can but rarely do get urinary tract infections. Help UTIs. Expect results in three to four days. Drink lots of lemon water or cranberry juice. Take a dropper full of uva ursi, echinacea, or yarrow tincture hourly. Sit in a hot bath and relax. Bacteria irritate the wall of the bladder. Cystitis is the bladder's equivalent of a bad sunburn. UTIs are usually caused by E. coli, a common fecal bacteria, which accounts for 82 to 85 percent of infections. Other bacteria that cause UTIs include Staphylococcus saprophyticus, 48 percent, Group B, strep Streptococci. 68%, Proteus 3%, and Clibacella 3%. Chlamydia and trichinoma organisms can also cause cystitis. Bacteria get to the bladder mostly from the anal area, wipe carefully, and intercourse, but also from diaphragm, spermicides, catheters, surgery, and trauma. Wearing a bloody menstrual pad for hours can allow E. coli to proliferate, crawl up the urethra, and start an infection. Diabetic women get more UTIs. Bacteria that do make it to the bladder are usually flushed out with urination, but about half of E. coli have a special hairy tip called a P. fimbria that helps them cling to the bladder wall. Untreated bladder infections increase the risk of incontinence and can damage the kidneys. Take action at the first hint of a UTI. Symptoms of cystitis include frequent intense urges to urinate, often with little result or with burning pain and bloody, cloudy, or strong smelling urine. Low-grade chronic bladder infection symptoms are subtle, depression, fatigue, and low energy. Should you take antibiotics for a non-symptomatic bladder infection, just say no. Sexually active women often have bacteria in the urine, especially after spermicide or diaphragm use. Three or more UTIs a year is a chronic problem. Persistent chronic bladder infections are a symptom of bladder cancer. If your UTI goes on for more than three months, seek help. Step two, engage the energy. Homeopathic remedies for those with bladder infections. Apis, stinging hot pain when urinating. Cantharis, scalding bloody urine, constant urge. Sasrapilla, pain at end of urination, dribbling. Staph, staphysagria, UTI caused by intercourse or anger. Energy healers say to put yellow, brown, zirconium, or green nephrite gemstones on your bladder or suck on them before sleep. Step three, nourish and tonify. Cranberries, prevent and counter UTIs. Daily use of cranberry juice or pills reduced by half the rate of infection in Canadian women who had two or more UTIs a year. Finnish women reduce UTIs 50% by drinking two ounces of cranberry juice daily. It works for elderly women too. Daily consumption prevents infections. How? Substances in cranberries, um, Proanthocyanidins, fructose, quinolinic acid, 
glycoproteins, D mannose, and tannins work synergistically to make life hard for E. coli and infectious bacteria. Proanthocyanidins bind to the P. fimbria and prevent them from attaching to the bladder, thus short-circuiting the infection. An especially slippery fructose keeps bacteria without a P. fimbria off balance too. Quinolinic acid converted by the liver into hyperic acid known to counter infection protects the kidneys. Reach for cranberries to prevent rather than eliminate UTIs. A dose of 500 milligram of cranberry extract is, an effect, is as effective as 100 milligram trimethoprim in preventing infections. If it's too late for that, mix cranberry juice half and half with strong hibiscus tea. Any cranberry in any form, even can, works. Raw cranberries are the least effective. Cooked berries, much, much berry, much, much better. Cranberry peels are expensive, but best for those with acid reflux problems. Juice with high fructose corn syrup or artificial sweeteners are to be avoided. I favor pure, unsweetened cranberry juice concentrate. Sour. <laughs> Expand your horizons. All berries in the vaccinum genus are effective against cystitis. Instead of cranberries, try blueberries or uh, bilberries or cowberries. Marshmallow roots, leaves, and flowers, when infused in water, contain a nourishing mucilage that soothes irritation, eases pain, stops inflammation, increases macrophage activity, and helps rebuild the bladder's lining so future infections are less likely. Hibiscus, a relative of marshmallow, kills the bacteria that cause bladder infections. A lot of the flower is as effective as the antibiotic chloro, chloramphenicol or phenosol. Hibiscus works well with cranberry as a preventative, especially for women who have eight or more UTIs a year. Ingesting hibiscus tea daily can reduce occurrence of infection by 77%. Herbalist Rosemary Gladstar's Bladder Helper Tea was created for women with chronic cystitis. A cup a day is a preventative to counter a UTI. It is drunk in quantity. Chamomile tea tastes good, soothes the bladder, and has been known to kill cystitis causing bacteria. Special peptides found in the urinary tract are the body's first line of defense against bacterial infections. The more the, to make more of these peptides, eat more protein and drink more nettle infusion. Watermelon increases urination and that keeps bacteria from lurking in the bladder, but the flesh is sugary, feeds bacteria, and acidic can irritate bladder lining, so eat the seeds instead. Step four, stimulate and sedate. If you feel a bladder infection coming, flush bacteria out by drinking water, cranberry juice, herb tea, black or green tea, or nettle infusion. Your goal is to drink enough to provoke urination hourly. Bacteria reproduce quickly. E. coli in the bladder can double every 20 minutes. Flush them out. When enough bacteria accumulate, they link together and form a tough film which thwarts attempts to dislodge them. Don't delay. Drink more now. Be prepared. Have the herbs you'll need on hand before you need them so you can help your bladder at the first twinge of discomfort. Add a tablespoon of dried horsetail herb to any herbal tea or use it alone to help halt a bladder infection. Avoid hot, spicy foods, curries, sauces, chili peppers, and hot peppers of all kinds. They irritate the bladder. Urologist Dr. Larry and Gillespie says chiropractic adjustments help women with chronic cystitis, cyst, uh, cystitis by relieving nerve pressure, which then allows the bladder to empty completely. Residual urine in the bladder is a setup for infection. Sitting in hot water eases bladder pain fast. For extra relief, add a handful of fresh pine or cedar needles. Don't wash down there with soap. Women who wash their vulva are four times more likely to get a bladder infection. Yarrow goes right to work killing bacteria in the bladder. A dropper full of tincture taken hourly or frequent sips of a strong tea will bring fast relief. Yarrow is a bladder star. In my experience, echinacea root tincture alone or in combination with yarrow tincture is more reliable in clearing both acute and chronic bladder infections than antioxidants. 
I mean, antibiotics. I use a dose of two to four dropper fulls of echinacea every one to two hours for acute UTIs and 10 to 20 drops yarrow if you wish. As symptoms abate or in chronic conditions, a dose every four hours will do. I continue until all symptoms cease. Simply prevent UTIs. Eat a quart of yogurt a week. Drink and eat cranberries and hibiscus. Stay well hydrated. Wipe from front to back or blot. Avoid douches, sprays, panty liners. Really empty your bladder always. Pee right after intercourse. No spermicides, no diaphragms. Regular use increases risk by 400%. Uva Ursi strengthens the bladder while eliminating acute and chronic infections. Dropper full doses of the tincture taken three to six times a day work well, but I prefer the reliable action of the infusion. To make it, put one ounce Uva Ursi leaf in a quart slash liter jar, fill with boiling water, steep, tightly cover for eight hours or overnight, strain and drink. Reflexology and acupressure help defeat chronic cystitis cystitis. My favorite herbs for those with bladder infections. Buchu relieves urgency and strengthens the system. Cleavers, astringency tones, tightens and moves fluid. Corn silk is intensely soothing and healing. Echinacea clears infection fast. Horsetail counters spasms and strengthens the bladder. Juniper berries disinfect the entire urinary system. Marshmallow root is a sweet soother. Roses and rose hips are pain relieving and soothing. Uva Ursi rids the bladder of bacteria. Tonifies too. Yarrow keeps you clear and keeps you going. Use them as simples or mix up a tea that suits you. Tinctures work too. A dose is usually a cup of tea or a dropper full of tincture taken several times a day. And check out bladder buddy tea and bladder blast. Coffee drinkers increase their risk of bladder infections by 20%, but not their risk of bladder cancer. Step five, use supplement, 5A, use supplements. Vitamin C, 500 milligrams of absorbic acid taken every few hours can knock infections out alone or with antibiotics, except to pee a lot. Expect to pee a lot while doing this. Your bowels may loosen as well. This is a cure. It is not a preventative. Caution. Absorbent acid can aggravate, may even precipitate interstitial cystitis and vulvodynia. Step 5B. Use drugs. A single dose of antibiotic is enough to quench most UTIs. Antibiotics are notorious for giving women vaginal yeast infections. Take probiotics or yogurt during and after treatment. Over-the-counter non-prescription drugs, drugs such as pyridum uh, ease the painful s symptoms of cystitis and don't kill the bacteria which are free to move into the kidneys and cause grave damage. Postmenopausal women with current bladder infections may find symptomatic relief with vaginal estrogen cream. Bactrim, a combination of two antibiotics, 80 milligrams trimethoprim and 400 milligrams sulfamethoxazole taken for three days is the current standard of care for those with UTI. Side effects are slight. A small dose taken daily or only after intercourse is used to prevent UTIs. Cranberries are as effective and safer. Avoid Cypro, Tequin, Levaquin, Floxin, and Naroxin. All are expensive, interfere with pregnancy, and cause nausea. Or try a single large dose rather than the regular three days worth. Nitrofurantoin, nitrofurantoins are safer during early pregnancy but must be taken for seven days instead of three and are more nauseating. Trimethoprims have worse side effects, as does Monurol. In the future, will UTIs be a thing of the past? If the vaccine Eurovac is successful, the answer could be yes. A full strength suppository followed by three booster suppositories more than half infections in a group of women with chronic STIs. Serious symptoms. Bacteria that cause bladder infections can cause the cause damage can damage the kidney. Seek immediate help if these symptoms accompany a UTI, blood in the urine, pain in the back or side, fever, nausea, or vomiting. Step six, break and enter. In a short course of 
antibiotic, if a short course of antibiotics does not clear your UTI, if you have more than three infections a year, or if your doctor suspects cancer or kidney disease, she or he may wish to do invasive diagnostic procedures. First, try the remedies in steps three and four. Ultrasound may be the safest test. Sister, sisters, sister. Cystoscopy can irritate the urethra. The dyes used in intravenous pilograms can cause severe allergic reactions. Both pilograms and CT scans use x-rays, which are cancer-inducing, especially to the ovaries and testes. One in four hospital patients will have a urinary catheter. Catheter-induced UTIs account for 40% of all hospital-acquired infections, many of which are antibiotic-resistant. Protect yourself. Take yarrow and echinacea tincture four to eight times a day and drink or eat bassium berries daily, blueberries or cranberries. Her story. Sarah is retired and volunteers at a local food bank. I got my first bladder infection at the age of two just after my sister was born. I was pissed off and I wasn't the only child anymore. That I wasn't the only child anymore. Despite lots of drugs and endless doctor visits, my bladder infections kept getting worse and worse. I remember lying on a gurney in a hospital hall while the doctors argued about whether my appendix was affected or not. They couldn't believe my excruciating pain was from a mere bladder infection. Finally, as a young adult, I discovered Uber Ursi. The first time I used it to counter a bladder infection, drinking two cups daily for a week was pretty much the last time I had any pain in my bladder. That was 60 years ago. Wow. All right, interstitial site. Let me let me go back and make sure I'm pronouncing this right again. Interstitial or muscles are too bowel and sexual symptoms. Pelvic floor muscle dysfunction is often linked with PBS and can cause a lot of the bladder, bowel, and sexual symptoms. Get to the pronunciation of damn word. The pelvic floor itself controls many bodily functions. If it isn't working normally or muscles are too tight, these functions could be affected. Luckily, there are ways to fight the symptoms and lessen their impact on your body Sorry, and your life. This how to pronounce interstitial cystitis. Interstitial cystitis. Interstitial cystitis. I'm going to just call it IC, okay? Interstitial cystitis. I see. Did you really think you could swallow all your feelings, my dearest, my own? Of course you want to be nice to accommodate, to smooth the way. But look at what it has done to you. You have worn yourself out like an old shirt. You are threadbare. The lining of your bladder is punched full of tiny holes and they are bleeding. Crying will not help now. This is the time to take your own safety seriously. It is time to stand up for yourself. Soothing will help a little and I'll offer you comfort, but there is so much more to do. Step zero, do nothing. De-stressing decreases the pain of, of interstitial cystitis. Cystitis. Interstitial. Interstitial cystitis, I see, by up to 50%. Meditate. Take a nap. Soak in a hot bath. Take it easy. Breathe deeply. Do nothing. Is it I see? If you answer yes to two or more, you may have IC. I've had a bladder infection that lasted longer than three months. I've gotten a negative culture when I thought I had a bladder infection. My bladder infections resist all treatments. My symptoms occur daily. I'm reluctant to leave home for fear I won't make it to the toilet in time. My pelvic pain interferes with my sex life. I have endometriosis, vulvodynia, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, and or out of irritable bowel syndrome, about one third of such women do have an affection. Step one, collect information. It, I see, was thought to be rare postmenopausal condition, but we found the average on age of onset to be 40. Approximately 1 million Americans, 90% of them women, suffer from IC, an ulcerated condition of the bladder lining. IC causes burning pain on urination, a need to urinate several times an hour, and severe pain down there. 
These are also symptoms of UTIs, STDs, kidney disease, bladder cancer, and some neurological disorders. Some urologists, since there is no definitive test for IC, don't believe in. Others have never heard of it. When all other problems are ruled out, IC is the diagnosis. For most women, a correct diagnosis takes four to seven years. IC is a chronic inflammatory condition of the bladder wall, but the pain may originate in the muscles or nerves. IC may coexist with vulvodynia and or fibromyalgia causing pain that is extremely difficult to pin down and even harder to treat. Step two, engage the energy. Biofeedback teaches you how to turn off your pain response. Is IC connected to paranoia or grudges? Oriental healers connect bladder pain to a withholding attitude. Affirmations for women with IC. I am safe right here and right now. I give my grudges to universal law. I am free and at ease. Cranial sacral treatments relieve IC pain for some. Step three, nourish and tonify. Soothing herbal infusions of milo, comfrey leaf, or linden ease pain, counter inflammation, and heal the little ulcerations of IC. Use them as sits baths several times a week and or drink one to, excuse me, two cups a day. Persistence brings big changes. Help, IC. Take an anti-inflammatory herb daily. Look at your diet. Do 100 Kegels a day. Stop taking vitamin pills. <clears throat> to soothe and heal inflamed bladders fast, try hot slippery elm tea with honey or flax seed soaked in cold water overnight and consumed or ground and cooked in with oatmeal. What you eat affects your bladder. Those with IC will want to avoid or limit artificial sweeteners, food preservatives, tofu, carbonated drinks, coffee, tea, chocolate, alcohol, vitamin C, absorbic acid added to many foods, and multivitamins. Enjoy bladder soothing foods like rice, barley, winter squash, yams, carrots, green plants, and peas often. Yoga, progressive muscle relaxation, and bladder retraining are techniques that have helped those with IC. Pelvic floor lifts and Kegels strengthen bladder muscles, increase lymph lymphatic circulation, restore blood flow, tonify the bladder wall, reduce pain, and diminish symptoms. Step four, stimulate and sedate. The urine of those with IC shows high concentrations of inflammatory substances. Anti-inflammatory herbs are allies. Black cohosh, root tincture, 10 to 15 drops taken two to three times a day when pain is sharp, stabbing, or icy. Licorice root tincture, 20 drops taken two to three times a day. Deglycerized is less likely to raise blood pressure. Oak bark tea, freely when everything else has failed. OSHA root tincture, three to five drops as needed when the belly feels heavy and full. Pope root tincture, one to two drops a day when pain is um, cyclinal, deep and congested. St. Jones wort tincture, 20 to 30 drops as needed when pain is electric-like. Help now, I see. Expect results in 30 minutes. Drink a teaspoonful of baking soda dissolved in water. Drink slippery elm as a tea or mixed powder with honey and eat. Ginger compresses on the abdomen can increase blood flow to the bladder, strengthen the muscles that help with bladder control and encourage release of pain blocking hormones. Steep an ounce of fresh grated ginger or a tablespoon of powdered ginger in a quart of boiling water. Soak a cotton cloth in it and apply over the pubic bone. Repeat as desired. Hops eases bladder irritation, nervousness, and pain that prevents sleep. The tea sipped or tincture taken 10 to 15 drops at a time is antipasmodic, sedative, relaxing, and antibacterial. Kava kava root infusion, freshly brewed or fermented for two to four days, is traditionally used to relieve uterine pain, spasm from chronic cystitis, irritable bladder, bed wetting, and incontinence. A cup a day is an effective dose. Step 5A, use supplements. Taking 500 milligrams of L-arginine three times a day reduces IC symptoms by raising levels of coenzyme nitric oxide synthase, often low in those with IC. This can initiate an outbreak of genital herpes, however. Chondro chondro chondroitin sulfate sodium 
hyaluronate and glucosamine sulfate repair ulcerations and heal the bladder wall. Step 5B, use drugs. Drug therapy had the best reported outcomes. Elm, Elm Iron is the only FDA-approved oral medication for IC. Over half the women using it had improvement. 30% reported no change. 4% deteriorated. Long-term use is required. Like Slippery Elm, it repairs defects in the bladder lining, replenishes the protective mucus surfaces, and forms a protective coating. Preleaf, an over-the-counter medication that neutralizes food acids, benefits 60% of those who take it, and 30% say 36% say it has no effect. <clears throat> those who have allergies in addition to IC often have elevated amounts of histamine-releasing mast cells in their bladder wall. Reduce them by hydroxine, hydrochloride. Um, quercetin supplements or a cold water infusion of Milo roots. Her story. Kay is now postmenopausal. Her story starts in 1970. My bladder infection was hardly cause for alarm. Little did I know that I was embarking upon a course of pain, repeated treatments, and frustration that would last for three decades. Three urologists all said my urethra was too narrow, uthral stenosis, and I'd have UTIs repeatedly unless I had it dilated. It never occurred to me to ask how other patients had fared with this treatment before agreeing to it. I believed them. Over the next five years, I had 10 dilations, each followed by installation of silver nitrate into my bladder and a course of antibiotics. After the first dilation, I experienced urgency and frequency for six months. After the 10th dilation, it was chronic. I felt like I had to urinate urgently every second. Painful gas and bloating also became chronic, along with overwhelming fatigue. I feared the treatment had been a terrible mistake. Known for over a century and now called IC or painful bladder syndrome, my problem is still not medically validated and is considered incurable. In 1981, a urologist advised me, advised me to get up dairy, wheat, sugar, and about 130 other foods. My bladder pain was reduced only slightly, but the fatigue, gas, and bloating was resolved. Over the next 20 years, I saw at least 30 specialists. Finally, in 2003, I found one who limited my diet to six foods, asked me to take L-lysine, and treated me for a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Today, I take no drugs and am pain-free at last. Other drugs used by those with IC include Neurontin to relieve nerve pain as St. Jones wart tincture does, Bictra, sodium citrate, an alkalizing agent, and urized in anesthetic antiseptic bladder relaxant as is Yarl tincture. Chronic cystis and IC. Avoid these foods. All spicy foods. Azorbic acid, vitamin C. In juices, preserves, multivitamins, health foods, fruits, apple, apricot, banana, cantaloupe, cranberry, grapes, raisins, grapefruit, guava, lemon, orange, peach, pineapple, plum, prunes, rhubarb, strawberry, watermelon. Dang, can't have none of this? Meat and fish, anchovies, pickled herring, caviar, chicken liver, cold cuts, corned beef, pork. Dairy, cheese, sour cream, yogurt, beans, fava beans, lentils, lima beans, all nuts, soy sauce, drinks, coffee, tea, alcohol, carbonated drinks, and aspartame, avocado, aloe vera, chocolate, ginger, onion, mayonnaise, pickles, rye, saccharine, tomato, vinegar. Sheesh. Include these healthy foods. Whole grains, brown rice, corn, quinoa, kasha, spelt, millet, whole wheat, pasta, breads, crackers, cookies, seeds, sunflower, pumpkin, sesame, tahini, and gomiso, fruits cooked, blackberry, blackcurrant, blueberry, cherry, gooseberry, kiwi, lychee, pomegranate, raspberry, vegetables cooked only, cabbage family plants, eggplant, leafy greens, summer squash, winter squash, potato, sweet potato, root vegetables, peas, seaweed, mushrooms, meat, turkey, chicken, venison, all fish, goat cheese, drinks not in plastic, nourishing herbal infusions, goat milk, full fat, organic milk, filtered tap water, Fats, olive oil, organic butter, pumpkin seed oil, coconut oil, roasted sesame oil. Step six, break and enter. Most of the 1,300 respondents said that the surgeries, hydro, distension, bladder installation, urethral dilation either worsened or had no effect on their symptoms. 
Cystoscopy is an invasive diagnostic procedure. It can irritate the bladder and worsen IC symptoms. You may wish to refuse it. Under local anesthesia, a tiny scope is threaded into the bladder through a tube placed in the urethra. This allows the interior of the bladder to be checked for small hummers, ulcers, or tiny bleeding sores that are characteristic of IC. A potassium sensitivity test can identify 70 to 90% of IC cases. However, it will irritate the bladder and it can cause a worsening of IC symptoms. Do you really need it? BCG high hyaluronic acid or dmso instilled directly into the bladder help relieve pain bcg reduces pain and frequency in more than half of patients hyaluronic acid heals defects in the lining of the bladder the pungent garlicky smell of dmso leaks from the patient's pores for days after a treatment Interstem is implanted in the abdomen to send mild electrical pulses to the sacral nerve. This dampens abnormal signals and can provide significant improvement in IC patients previously unresponsive to other therapies. Her story, Robin is a single, hardworking, young professional. I was never formally diagnosed with IC, but I had all the symptoms, burning ur urination, urethral pain, bladder spasms. The pain was horrible. I created a food diary, logging everything I ate and nothing and noting symptoms. For six months, I ate only foods that agreed with me. I eliminated the usual irritants, plus a few personal ones, such as avocado that set my bladder on fire. I put pumpkin seed oil on everything. Marshmallow root tea gave me tremendous relief. The only thing that eased the burning in my bladder faster was a few sips of baking soda and water. Magic. It's been four years since I had any pain. TENS, or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, delivers electric pulses via implanted wires or devices inserted into the vagina or rectum, which increase blood flow to the bladder. Some IC sufferers are in so much pain that they have their bladder removed, but suprapubic and pelvic pain often persists after surgery. Even cutting the sacral nerve is not guaranteed to eliminate pain. Try the wise woman ways gathered here instead. Bladder cancer. What is cancer? asked Grandmother Grove, her dark eyes serious. Is it stuck energy? No, it is moving energy. It is dangerous because it is movable. If cancer stayed where it started, very few would die of it. Envision the cancer in your bladder. What can slow it down? You need strong medicines now. Lean on me for a while. Let us sing a song. Step one, collect information. Bladder cancer is the fourth most common and the eighth most deadly cancer among American men and the 10th most common cancer among women with approximately 60,000 new cases and 13,000 deaths per year. Most bladder cancers are pussycats, not tigers. At least 80% of bladder cancers are chronic and slow growing. Who is likely is to be diagnosed? A white, twice as likely as black man, twice as likely as a woman who is 60 or older, lives in the north or northeast, 40% more likely than in the south, smokes tobacco, doubles risk, uh, rarely drinks water, and has a parent, grandparent, or sibling with bladder cancer. About half of men's bladder cancers and a third of women's are from tobacco use, but not secondhand smoke. About one quarter are due to ingestion of solvents and aromatic aminines, either from occupational exposure or from contaminated groundwater found in paint, chemicals, rubber, textiles, leather goods, machine shops, beauty salons, and printing plants. Blood in the urine is the most common symptom of bladder cancer, occurring 70% of the time. Don't look for red unless you ate beets, but a rusty color. Other symptoms include pain on urination, difficulty in starting or stopping the flow, increasing urgency, and an increasingly urgent need frequent need to avoid. <clears throat> Most urinary bladder cancers are limited to the inner lining. To engage the energy, take an imaginary journey into your bladder. Call your helpers, guardians, and guides. Put their hands on the lining of your bladder from the inside and allow the energy of health to pour through you and vibrate in every cell. Step three, nourish and tonify. Red clover infusion, medicinal mushrooms, burdock, and kelp nourish and enliven the immune system and kill cancer cells. 
Two servings a day of yogurt lowers risk of bladder cancer by 40%, 45% for women, 36% for men. Step four, stimulate and sedate. Herbs strong enough to kill cancer are poisonous if misused. Celandine root tincture is an old world remedy for all bladder and liver problems. A dose is five to 10 drops one to two times a day. Poke root tincture kicks the immune system into high gear. Start with one drop a day. Work up to 10 to 15 drops a day. Mistletoe injections are a mode of complementary cancer care favored in Germany and elsewhere in Europe. Chaparral herb tincture is the desserts cure the desert's cure for anything nasty. Start with one to two drops, one to three times a day, and increase as needed. Does keeping well hydrated and emptying the bladder frequently lessen the risk of bladder cancer? One study did find men who drank six or more cups of water a day have their risk of bladder cancer versus men who drink a cup of water or less daily. Step five, use drugs. Compared with similar cancer-free individuals, those with bladder cancer were three times more likely to have used permanent hair dyes at least once a month for 15 years or more. Even using them once a month for a year doubles risk. Hairdressers and barbers have five times the risk after 10 years on the job. Semi-permanent dyes such as henna appear to be safe. Step six, step six break and enter. Treatment of bladder cancer is all over the lot from mild to mutilating. We found those treated less least aggressively survive just as long. Initial high intensity treatments fail to prevent the need for more interventions in later years. Diagnosis of bladder cancer is more through cystoscopy and urine cytology, which looks for nuclear matrix proteins from the cancer. NMP is, use, is useless uh, for screening. Simple bladder cancer is scraped away under local anesthesia as an outpatient basis. Healing is usually complete in two weeks. Most of the time, 70%, simple bladder cancer will recur, so regular follow-up monitoring is a must. Follow-up monitoring three to four times a year by cystoscopy and MMP will find 99% of all recurrent bladder cancers. Radiation and chemotherapy instead of surgery, this cures only 40% of the time and requires regular follow-up tests. If the bladder must be removed, it can be replaced with a lab-grown bladder or a piece of your own intestine. Wow. Since there are only 8,000 cystectomies done in America each year, it is vital to seek out a university medical center or a large hospital for the best outcome. Bladder star, yarrow. Yarrow flower tea or tincture counters urinary infections, relieves pain, restores tone to the bladder, counters incontinence, eases urinary tract spasms, and aids those with bladder cancer. Yarrow not only destroys infective uh, bacteria in the bladder, it strengthens the bladder wall, so repeat infections are less likely, and it doesn't promote vaginal yeast as antibiotics do. Expect relief from pain in minutes, lessening of fever in hours, and complete remission of bladder infections in a couple of days when using a dropper full of the tincture of the fresh flowering herb hourly or taking frequent sips of strong yarrow tea. To kill all the bacteria in your bladder, it is important to take yarrow tincture four to six times a day for seven to ten days. For double insurance, take a dropper full of uva ursi tincture two to three times a day too. To tonify the bladder, counter incontinence, and heal IC ulcers, the dose is up to a dropper full of tincture or a cup of tea daily. Blood in your urine, reach for the yarrow. Yarrow is not recommended during pregnancy. Expand your horizons. Many asteraceae family plants such as yarrow, echinacea, and chamomile strengthen and heal the bladder. So do oxide daisy flowers, Spanish needle flowers, pearly everlasting flowers, goldenrod flowers or roots, black-eyed Susan roots. Oh, all right, well, that is the end of the bladder section. The next section will be trauma down there. So I will tune in with that. When it is time, thank you so much for tuning in. Peace.